going to have you take a look at a couple of multiple choice slash numeric response questions before we really get going for the day here. The first one is question number 10. All right, let's have a look now. Uh, this one says a 2,100 kilogram uh, van collides with a 1,200 kilogram car that's at rest. They lock together, speed of 4.5 meters per second. What's the initial speed of the van? So this is the, uh, the, the car accident, traffic accident investigation that the police officer is doing, right? Uh, we know that PI equals PF. It's a collision. We could do impulse, but if we did impulse, we'd look at either the van or the car, not both. We're going to say M1V1I plus M2V2I. equals MVF, two objects before the collision, one object afterwards. 2100 times V1I, don't know what that is. We know that V2I is at rest, so we're going to make it zero. The total mass here after the collision is 3300 kilograms times the final velocity of the wreckage, which is 4.5. What does that work out to be when we say 3300 divided by 4.5, sorry, times 4.5 divided by 2100? 7.07 .07 meters per second, rings a bell. We'd express that on a bubble sheet as 7.07, like that. Good? Okay, let's take a look at another multiple choice example then. This one is number 13. Deals with, uh, a little bit tricky because it deals with a freight car with a mass M. We don't really know what that mass is. Okay, I want to see what you can do with that. Ask me questions about that, but wait a couple of minutes. Give it some thought first uh, before you ask questions, and then call me over and ask me a question on it, okay? All right, number 13 says, an empty freight car of mass M coasts along a track at 2 meters per second until it couples with a stationary freight car of mass 2M. The final speed of the two freight cars immediately after the collision is what? So we're going to say, once again, conservation of momentum. Um, I think we all recognize that. If you looked at individually the one car, we could do that using impulse, but odds are conservation of momentum is going to be what we use here. First one is M1V1I plus zero, because the second freight car is, is not moving, equals mass total times VF, right? What's mass one? Well, we don't really know. We know it's M. They call it M times two meters per second equals what's the total mass when the one, one, one car collides with the other one that's 2M? What's it going to be, Rosie? It's going to be 3M, right? 1M plus 2M is 3M times the final velocity. That's what we're looking for here. We've got a couple of variables here. How do we, how do we deal with this if we've got mass unknown and we've got VF unknown? Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was talking to, I was talking to, sorry, I was actually talking to Josh Donaldson there. Uh, so How's the hip, by the way? Yeah, yeah okay. Oh, okay. I think we can probably do a little bit easier than that. Oh, okay, you're not done? Oh, okay, sorry. Sorry. Uh, okay, yes, it does. Why did you divide 2 by 3, though? Yeah. Okay, okay, so you said you kind of used a ratio almost there. Yeah, okay. Okay, that, that's actually not a bad idea. Yeah. Now, there would be an issue with that if the second car was moving initially, too. Um, but when it's like this, no, that'll work, actually. Yeah, that'll work. What did you do, Ollie? Well, like, I can't remember what you said about momentum, I think it was, but, like, speed, like, you know, like, how uh, one time, uh, you know, the car fell on the way on the back of the or something like that. Yeah. So I was thinking, I was like, oh, so if they add up to three, then uh, I realized that if I got rid of the uh, three M by the Yeah. So it's one over that comes up by two. Okay. 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 What is it? I can't, yeah, that's what I did too. Cancel the M's. Because it appears in both terms. No, but you know what? Your reasoning was good. So is Ethan's, right? You can. It just takes a little bit longer, that's all. 
But you know what? Hey, listen, I'm I'm never going to be critical of a method that takes a little bit longer if it's good reasoning. That was. Okay. If it appears in both terms, every term, we can cancel it out. So we're going to do that. 2 is equal to 3 times VF, and we're just going to say VF is equal to 2, 2 divided by 3, which is 0 0.667. Ethan, did you see what we did there? All I did is said, look, M appears in both terms, cancel it out. And we're left with 2 is equal to 3 VF, so we divide 2 by 3. All right? How many people got that one? Good. Good. I got one more for you here today, and then we'll move on to some new stuff here. Uh, this is number 14, and this is a tricky one. See what you can do with this one now. All right, let's have a look at this one now. It says two boys, Ted and Larry, initially at rest, push each other apart on a frictionless surface. Ted has a mass of 40. Larry has a mass of 60. The boys push each other apart. Ted has a speed of 6. We don't know what speed Larry's moving. We want to know how Larry compares to Ted in terms of momentum and or kinetic energy. Does Larry have more momentum than Ted or less? More kinetic energy or less? There's two of these that I can eliminate pretty quickly, actually, without doing any kind of calculation. Yeah? Yeah, I can eliminate momentum. Why, do, why can we eliminate both A and B for momentum? What do we know about Ted and Larry's momentum, Ethan? They're, they've got to be equal. If they had zero momentum before this, this interaction took place, then they have to have total zero momentum afterwards. If Larry gains 10, then Ted must lose 10. Right? So the momentum has to be the same. Kinetic energy, the only way we can do kinetic energy, I think, is to calculate it, though, right? The kinetic energy of Larry and the kinetic energy of Ted. So let's try to calculate the kinetic energy of each of these guys. Um, Ted, Ted has a, a mass of 40 kilograms. And hey, Ted has a speed of 6 meters per second. So we're going to say 6 squared is 36. 36 times 40 divided by 2 is uh, uh, 20 times 36 is 720. So Ted has a kinetic energy of 720 joules. Now, how much kinetic energy does Larry have? One half of the mass of Larry is 60 kilograms. And of, oh, we don't know what the speed of Larry is, do we? Any ideas here? Yeah? I'm sorry? How'd you get four meters per second? Okay, so you said it's an, ex it's like, it's an explosion, right, basically, where you say the zero... The zero is the initial momentum, equals m1v1f plus m2v2f. So we analyze it the way we, we have been analyzing it. Zero is equal to, we'll say, uh, 40 times 6 plus 60 times v2f. And v2f worked out to be 4. So then we said 4 squared. 4 squared is 16. 16 times 30 is 480. So that means that Ted has more kinetic energy than Larry, or Larry has less kinetic energy than Ted. All right? Did anybody look at this and say, kind of reason through this and say, you know what, I think that uh, Larry would have less kinetic energy than Ted because um, Ted's mass, sorry, Ted, um, Larry's mass, Larry's mass is 50% higher than Ted's. They have to have the same momentum. But speed matters more. Yes? Okay, why does speed matter more? Because it's one-half mv squared, right? So although their momentum has got to be the same, and Larry's speed is going to go down by the same factor as Ted's mass went down, okay, by the same factor as his, his mass went up, then because speed matters more, um, the kinetic energy of the guy with, with less speed is going to be less. You know he has more mass, he has less correspondingly less speed, but that speed matters more. Yeah? Okay, Re regardless of which way you look at it, how many people got that answer? Good, actually. That's pretty good.